Thank you. Good morning, uh, Chairman, Co-Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the topic is about how to achieve satisfactory reduction in intercantery fractures. So we start with the goal of the reduction. First goal is uh, to restore the proximal femoral alignment without virus reduction. That is a factor of fixation failure. The second goal is to prevent excessive sliding. That was a factor related to iliotibial band irritation and get disturbance in severe excessive sliding. In APV, we use a positive medial cortical support to prevent excessive sliding. And in lateral view, we avoid anterior cortex of the proximal fragment get inside the distal fragment, or it's called subtype P reduction. Let's start with the case. Uh, the simple fracture, and you undergo surgery with the fracture table. After the patient was settled down on the fracture table and the re reduction was performed, the fracture had become to be good alignment like this. So you continue to fixation with cephalomedullary nail. Okay, and the post-operative radiograph is a good, within acceptable alignment. So everyone hope that intertocantric fracture will be happy ending like this, but it's not true in the real life. Uh, come to the second case, with a preoperative radiograph show like this, uh, and this case is a, a refer from other hospital. So, and it is my fault that I didn't repeat the lateral cross table radiograph. It's a AP and lateral view of the femur. Uh, the patient was obese. For the interoperative setting, I set up uh, and re reduced as same as the first case, but the fluoroscope picture was not familiar. So I performed a lateral view. It, it was a little bit surprised that uh, it's a 100% translation of the posterior uh, of the distal fragment. So I disengaged the fracture by traction force, and I found that the AP view show like this. It's a uh, surprise in intraoperative. Uh, comparing between two cases, it was extremely different. Although I have done everything and every step into the same. <laughs> and this is the answer what I am faced with. It was an irreducible pattern. Uh, Dr. Sharma classified the fracture into four groups. The first and the second groups were high energy trauma in young populations. The first group uh, pattern is intact, lesser to canter to the distal fragment and the proximal fragment locked underneath the shaft of the femur. The second group is bisected lesser to canter and it has a ileo so as tendon interposition. The third and the fourth groups were low energy trauma. It occurred in the elderly patients. The third group was posterior medial entrapment, and the proximal fragment displaced anteriorly. The fourth group was long medial beak. It's become flexion on the proximal fragment from the deforming force. So in this case, uh, it can be classified into the third group. However, uh, in this study, we will that every group could be reduced with open reduction. Come back to the case. <laughs> so I have two concerns in every step. First, the entry point would be more proximal than usual because of uh, the obese patient. I always use a separate body strap and arm strap to make a clear entry point and 
to setting a position adduction. When you think the fracture table could not provide a satisfactory reduction, you should prepare intraoperative equipment for percutaneous or open reduction. I try to manipulate the fracture, and luckily, it's still mobile. So I decide to scrub in and plan to use a percutaneous technique first. I use a coker clamp to control a proximal fragment by anterolateral mini incision. It's same the incision when you put down the uh, chance pin to the external fixator. I step incision and use a coker. Uh, I use a coker because it's a, a simple instrument in the set. I control the proximal fragment with a coker and press it down. And I use a hammer to elevate the distal fragment up. And the lateral fluoroscope picture is alignment is okay. And before I do a proximal reaming, I use a hammer to compress the fracture side at the lateral side, like the picture. And I will tell you later how important of this hammer. After nailing, we found the gap. So I use a bone hook to minimize the gap and find adjust the AP alignment. The bone hook is inserted uh, into the same incision of the entry point of the nail. And this is a post-operative radiograph. If you make sure that the fracture alignment was accepted, you no need to worry about the gap. The post operative program is to let the patient walk with weight as toilet, and the gap was closed, and the fracture was union consecutively. Come back to the hammer. <laughs> uh, the key is not to reduce, but prevent further displacement from the proximal reamer. For the example, in this case, uh, pertocantric fracture. When you perform a proximal reaming without the hammer, the ream would unintentionally go through the lateral side because of the medial bone quite harder than the lateral. The medial bone trends to be intact after you do a proximal reaming, and when you insert the nail, the proximal fragment was translated medially, like, like a nail kick the fragment up. It's called fish mouth deformity, like this. You can correct it by gradual reaming the proximal fragment. Uh, the first technique is uh, the green one, uh, I use a curved osteotome insert into the canal and gradual ream, eccentric medial reaming. And the second technique is I uh, use a bone hook to, to pull the medial fragment into the reamer and can insert the guide. In conclusion, uh, to achieve the satisfactory reduction, no varus reduction, and prevent off the excessive sliding. Use more proximal entry point in obese patients. Correct the unsatisfied reduction with instrumentation, and use the hammer when perform a proximal reaming. Last is to aware and prepare for the irreducible patterns. Thank you.